Yes, and welcome back on the touchline. We continue with our interview. Kenya Icelands are in the building. And of course, pleased to have the head coach for the team, Timothy Kobe. Karibu sana, Timothy. Sante sana. Yes. And I mean, for you to say that in Swahili, fluent Swahili, means that you've been around for some time, right? Well, I've been in Kenya for almost 15 years now. And I've been one way or another working with, living or dealing with the country for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. But don't get me on the swa. <laughs> My Swahili's awful. <laughs> Occasionally, I'm, I'm trying to develop a bit of ice hockey language with Swahili mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I, uh, sometimes communications is a little hard with uh, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. using English. Mm -hmm. And also maybe your foray with uh, the Kenya Icelands. How did it begin? Maybe in 2015, 2016 or thereabout. How did you uh, get uh, start coaching the uh, ice hockey team? To be honest, the first couple of times I was asked by some Kenyan players. Mm -hmm. They were just starting out and I said no. Mm -hmm. Twice. Mm -hmm. Ice hockey, year in, year out, is ranked as the most difficult team sport in the world. Mm -hmm. It's got a huge amount of skill sets. Mm -hmm. The footwork on ice, mm -hmm. right? the hand-eye coordination, mm -hmm. the body contact, mm -hmm. it's a fast game, and it's expensive. Mm -hmm. right? A full set of equipment can cost 30, 40,000 shillings easily mm -hmm. for a child. Mm -hmm. right? So it's very hard. So I said no. But then I realized how passionate these guys were. They were really, really into it. So I couldn't say no mm -hmm. in the end, right? Mm -hmm. And I coached youth hockey in Canada for about 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm familiar with how to organize it, how to design the practices and run the games. It's very complex, right? Um, in addition to being expensive, it's very time consuming. You have to put a lot of hours in on the ice and off the ice to develop your skills. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, over this time period, I'm amazed at how far this team has come. Mm -hmm. why, play it, why play it if it's that expensive? Well, as, as some of the players have told you, it is the greatest game in the world. It's the coolest game in the world. Not cool just because yeah, the ice is ice. cold. <laughs> it is the coolest game uh -huh. because of those skill sets. Uh -huh. and, and I've seen mm -hmm. from the youth up mm -hmm. to the adults mm -hmm. how proud and confident they become mm -hmm. de developing, mastering this complex and large number of skill sets. Mm -hmm. So it's also a great way to develop as a person. Mm -hmm. When you take on something this challenging mm -hmm. and succeed at it, mm -hmm. you can see their confidence levels going up mm -hmm. on a weekly basis mm -hmm. as they master these skill sets. So it's just a, a great game to do. Mm -hmm. And it's fast and it's exciting. Mm -hmm. How has it evolved before your eyes for the time that you've been around? Every once in a while, I just take a step back and I go, wow. I can't believe we're at this level now in terms of having a whole youth program, a seniors program, and then looking at the amount of the, the number of skills they've mastered and then collectively how they play on the ice. That's also a very big challenge when you're moving 30, 40 kilometers an hour on the ice, right? How to be positioned properly in that and the way they're picking it up, it's amazing. I take it for granted a bit, but then we have expats who come in and they see the team some of these guys played professionally overseas and they're like, wow, I can't believe it. How, how has this happened? And it's happened, as the, the players told you earlier, mm -hmm. through their dedication, their perseverance. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yes. And maybe I uh, asked this earlier about the support that team, the Iceland, Kenya Icelands have gotten from uh, the traditionally ice uh, hockey playing nations. Well, we've received equipment uh, from you know, Canada, the US, European countries, even Japan and uh, we see financial donations too. We have a GoFundMe campaign. We've sold that beautiful jersey that you've seen. You saw a minute ago, it's ranked in the top 10 in the world for international jerseys, so we sell that to raise money, and that's helped a lot. The Canadian High Commission has helped us out quite a bit. And uh, the reason they're all willing to help out is because they just see how far this young team has come in such a short time and how they've broken down barriers. Mm -hmm. Everybody associates ice hockey with being a white man's sport. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the game in North America now, you will see people of Asian heritage, African heritage playing the game now. But when they see literally an all African team on ice, people are like, wow, anybody can do it, mm -hmm. right? And that really inspires people back home in North America. I, I've had people working in diversity issues in ice hockey in North America contact me and say, wow, you guys are an inspiration to our hockey community. Mm -hmm. How, what do you think has been a, uh, been like a factor or catalyst behind their um, uh, quick progress, breaking the barrier so quickly? Well, uh, it, it's tough because when, I, when you get on the ice, and I, and I say this to all the, when we call them Team Mzungu, the, the expatriate players, mm -hmm. right? I say this to them, you know, when I coached our kids back home and I watched them go up the learning curve like this and I see the Kenyan players go up like this, 
I think there's a, a better, bigger hunger here for it. They're hungrier, they're very special. Look, there's you know, 50, 60 ice hockey players from the youth to the seniors in a country of 50 or so million people. Mm -hmm. They're very unique and very special and I think they feel that and it helps propel them to work harder. Mm -hmm. And with the Olympic dream coming up next, I, I, I mean the double IHF recognizing yeah. Kenya. I mean, what does it mean to you as the person you've worked with them for uh, quite some time now? With the, now that means that the Olympic dream is it's possible. It's mm -hmm. One step closer. Mm -hmm. right? Every mm -hmm. day is one step closer. We were on the ice at 7.30 this morning. These guys were out there teaching the youth, taking us one step closer. But when we joined the International Ice Hockey Federation, that's a big giant step forward. Mm -hmm. They have a, a program of development support mm -hmm. for young nations like ours, mm -hmm. young ice hockey nations. And we have a meeting with them coming up this month. Uh, so we'll look at training coaches. So, right? so I'm trying to help teach how to coach ice hockey. Again, very complex to teach. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the IIHF, International Ice Hockey Federation, will help take that up too. Mm -hmm. So it's a developmental stage. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be reaching out to uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk to uh, C.S. Merkelman about this and see what we can do with the government, how they can also help support us. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kenya Ice Lines have put Kenya on the map in many ways. And I'd be willing to bet... Uh, a month's salary, I'm retired so I don't have a salary, <laughs> I can say that, uh, a month's salary that they are the most famous team outside of Africa, Kenya team outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. I wore that jersey in London a couple weeks ago, people recognize it. I wear it in North America, in Toronto, New York, people recognize it. We have a huge following internationally, but nobody knows it's in Kenya yet, mm -hmm. right? We're just starting to get known in Kenya, so we will talk to the, the ministry about that too, get a little more publicity. Uh, we have our game on Monday. I uh, hope you're going to be there. Yeah, I'll and be there. I'll let be there Kenyans know. on Monday, yes. And let Kenyans know. And, and it, it's, a, it's a great facility at Panari. It's, mm. a, it's a very good ice rink they have. The ice is good. And it's not that cold. Kenyans don't like to get too cold, they tell me. But ice rink isn't that cold. Yeah. So you can come out and skate with us. For real on Monday. Anybody mm. who wants to join me. But how complex is it to teach and how do you break it down? Um, you, you, skating is first. So we don't even have people come to join us to learn ice hockey until they can skate fairly well, mm -hmm. right? It's like if you're playing football, you have to be able to run, mm -hmm. right? And skating is challenging. Uh, it's easier to teach kids because when they fall down, they just get back up. Mm -hmm. Adults, it's a little harder. Um, but you, you work on the skating and we have some excellent skating teachers with the Ice Lions. Mm -hmm. And Panari has an ice skating program where they will teach you how to ice skate. Uh, so once you start to master that, then you can get the hockey stick in your hand and start playing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and of course, talking about the popularity of the jersey, that means that the game holds a lot of promise back here. Oh, I think so. Uh, we have to turn people away. We, can't, we don't have enough money to support everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we are supporting some kids who can't afford it. Mm -hmm. You know, kids from Makuru and, and, and other places who can't afford it. And they love the game, mm -hmm. right? So they're really taking it up. Mm -hmm. And so the future is bright, mm -hmm. but we do need some funding to pay for the ice time. Mm -hmm. It's expensive to maintain the ice, mm -hmm. uh, so the ice costs are expensive to us. Mm -hmm. So we need that money. Mm -hmm. And what, what model maybe are you like um, handling the project for teaching those from the neighborhoods? Well, the Mathara Youth Sports Association, MISA, is a great model. It's a brilliant model. They do so much community work because sports isn't just about the final score at the end of the game. It's about what you learn in the process through practice, you learn how to be a teammate as well as just an individual on the, on the ice or on the football pitch. So MISA has done a great job with that and their community work is outstanding. They're no one worldwide for that. We would love to be able to eventually get to that level where, use it, where you use ice hockey as a tool for individual team mm -hmm. but also collective or community development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean how uh, the success of this particular project, how proud will you be? Uh, will it be to, to, to ice hockey in Kenya? Well, at, at the moment, I'm so proud of the team in terms of what they're doing on the ice, but I also see what they're doing off the ice. Mm -hmm. uh, very proud of that. And as we extend to hopefully incorporate more youth who don't have the, all the advantages, mm -hmm. uh, I know they're going to take that on because I see them helping out mm -hmm. all the time with these youth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the way we're going to go. Yes. And that includes young girls. You watch these girls get on ice. They are tough and they can play. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the quality of, um, you know, the team that was just here before you, Robert, Benjamin, Arnold, and, and the mm -hmm. rest of the Ice Lions members, what, what do you think uh, the tournaments that they've been able to participate mm -hmm. in, how does it improve them? How, what kind, how does it make them better or quality players? 
Oh, the, the international exposure is great uh, for just learning new technical skills, but also it means they're playing on a full ice surface. Mm -hmm. Our ice surface is about one third the size, mm -hmm. right? So now they're playing on a much larger ice surface. It's a whole different game. Mm -hmm. And you play five against five mm -hmm. on the big ice with goalies, mm -hmm. right? And we play three on three plus goalies. Mm -hmm. So we play a very fast game here. Mm -hmm. Very, we don't play off sides or anything like that, just to keep the game moving, right? Which is great. Um, but going to play internationally, it's a whole different game, and they're really learning a lot by doing that. Mm -hmm. And facing other African countries, just six or five that mm -hmm. played, how, I mean, does it bring the, the competitiveness that's deserved or desired? Oh, and how definitely. Does Kenya yeah. rank among them? Yes. Oh, they're going to do well. We're going to do well. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to do well. But one of the unique things about the Kenya Ice Lines, mm -hmm. they're a totally indigenous program, right? The North African countries, they don't really play in their country so much. Some of them play in France, the Francophone countries play in France, or in Quebec and Canada, and in North America. So they have all that exposure, whereas here we're totally indigenous grassroots, right? And it's amazing to see what we've done completely internally mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. right? I'm very proud of the team for doing that because they haven't had all that time to learn in New York and Montreal and Paris and these other places. Right? So they've done it themselves. It, it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. The inspiring story is maybe from uh, the short time they've been in charge from the players. Well, how, how important is it? What are some of the inspiring stories that you've maybe come in contact with as during your time? Well, th there's experience on the ice mm -hmm. and off the ice, mm -hmm. right? Because you spend more hours off the ice than you do on the ice, just getting ready and doing things, right? Mm -hmm. So you get to know people on a personal level. Right? Uh, you get to know what their struggles are and how, the, how they're managing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, hockey is a very expensive sport. And, mm -hmm. and so one of the things I really noticed is their determination because mm -hmm. some of these guys are taking one, two, three matatus to get there and then back, right? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they have to chip in and pay for ice equipment and ice time. So you really learn a lot about the person and how much they care about the sport by seeing that dedication mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest challenge to, uh, for developing the sport? And primarily it's funding, right? We need more ice time. Mm -hmm. You know, like any sport, you equate success with the number of hours you can put into it. Mm -hmm. The challenge with ice hockey is you have to do it on ice, mm -hmm. right? It's not like football and so many other sports. You can go play almost anywhere, find a patch of grass, right? And ice time is expensive mm -hmm. for us. So mm -hmm. if we can get more funding, when we can, you have more ice time, we can expand the program exponentially because the demand is there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and proper leagues and clubs, do you think how important will this be for the game? Oh, very important. So we would like to expand the senior level right now. We have two official senior teams. Mm -hmm. And then when we go internationally, we, we select the best from those teams to play. Um, and we want to start developing the intermediate and the youth program more. Mm -hmm. So we have the two clubs now, the Ice Lion Pride and the Ice Lion Frozen Flames. Mm -hmm. Right? And soon I think we'll be able to have a third, mm -hmm. growing slowly, but step by step. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is the quality. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And how about the um, capacity building of the officials, especially, especially the coaches and the trainers? This is the most important part now. Right? And so we have uh, the players you had on earlier, they were all on the ice this morning. I'll be doing some coaching clinics on how to run a practice and coach for them. And then we'll go s to some international courses on how to coach. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, and not only how to coach, but how also how to do first aid. Mm -hmm. uh, hockey, hockey is very dangerous. So we want to get people certified in their first aid training, certified as coaches, right, and certified as referees. So it's completely Kenyan built. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the how Kenya has really been able to run fast and gain the international attention as far as playing on the ice is concerned and also having this particular friendship league that's mm -hmm. more like modeled along, you know, promoting tourism locally. The, the Friendship League has been a great friend for us, right? Um, they, they do really interesting ice hockey tours around the world. They've even gone to North Korea and done ice hockey and tourism. But their favorite place seems to be Kenya because this will be their third time back. Mm -hmm. So you meet these players. Some of them played some pro. Uh, some of them are what we call beer leaguers. They just played casually. Mm -hmm. They come with the Friendship League here. They play the tournament. You see a bit of the Kenyan nightlife. But yes. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> and then they get out, then they get out on Dangerous. safari. Yes. Right? And they, go, and they love it. They come to the beaches, the safari, because Kenya is just a great place to visit. Mm -hmm. If you can do that and play the sport you love, then hey, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just wonderful for yes. them. Yes. And maybe uh, just as we come to a close of this particular interview, how, what's the promise of this particular sport, Coach? 
Oh, it's unlimited. It's absolutely unlimited. Imagine a country on the equator, a hot country, warm climate, picking up the most difficult team sport in the world on ice and succeeding. Mm -hmm. If they could do that, then the potential sky's the limit, mm -hmm. unlimited. Yes, Africa Cup of Nations next year, will you just be out there to get yourselves against the rest of the country? Very much, and I can't believe this is coming together. Everyone is so excited from the organizers in Cape Town up to the North African side and us. Everyone is so excited to have this. It's the first ever, mm -hmm. right? It is an inaugural All Africa Ice Hockey Cup. And I think we're going to have a very good chance at this, mm -hmm. despite the odds. Mm -hmm. The odds makers will be against us, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. never count the ice lines out. Yes, indeed. And the schedule, this particular remaining session of the, uh, of the year, maybe of the calendar, we have the tournament coming up. That's uh, Mashuja Day on, on, on Monday. What else lies ahead? Well, we have Mashuja, we have uh, the Mataraka Cup. Um, we have our playoffs. Our regular season will end in a little while. Mm -hmm. Then we have the playoffs, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then we also have the youth games coming up. For mm -hmm. example, next week we'll have a youth the youth games we'll play. Mm -hmm. So there's lots on the go. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot on the go with the mm -hmm. Ice Lions. And coach, maybe before you go, what keeps you going and coaching these, but the Ice Lions? Oh, they, they inspire me completely. It's not easy. Up at six o'clock this morning on the ice by seven mm -hmm. i'm tired mm -hmm. uh, but these guys inspire me whether it's the kids always trying their best and i can be a bit of a tough coach but they never give up yeah and the the seniors they just inspire me so you got to get out there and do it yeah they have to do more runs right yeah those who I, sometimes those i make who them don't. a few extra laughs, <laughs> yes. and those who don't Oh, push-ups on ice. Uh, push-ups on ice uh, and all that equipment. Uh, or I chase them with a the hockey stick. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like to see that on Monday. You will. Thank you so much, Timothy Colby. Good. The head coach for the Kenya Ice Lions has been speaking with us on the touchline. Up next, we'll be taking to the fan zone. We talk about the European football up next.